thrilled to welcome Paul and Aaron from Mattermost. Paul is a customer community manager and Aaron is a senior product manager. Their session is entitled Build Incredible Software Products with a Remote DevOps Culture. How can remote teams use collaboration platforms effectively to adapt to company culture while continuing to create their best work? You're about to find out. Paul and Aaron, thanks for sharing your genius with us. Take it away. Hi, I'm Paul Rothrock and I'm a customer engineer at Mattermost. Um, I've been working remotely since I figured out a telnet to the computer lab in college rather than walking across campus. So I've got a lot of experience about what it's like to work remotely. Um, and we're gonna share that with you today. And I'm Aaron Rothschild, I'm a product manager and I focus on integrations here at Mattermost. Um, I've been working for about eight years uh, in remote roles at various different technology companies, uh, typically in the product management role. So today what we wanted to kind of you know, talk about is obviously there's, there's been a big change in the world. Um, lots of different organizations are really scrambling to adopt remote work. Um, lots that were previously on-site companies um, are turning to different types of tools um, because they're being forced to. And it really has um, kind of created a bit of a situation where, you know, that's difficult for some people. Um, working remote is not something that comes innately to everyone. Um, and there's different ways to make it easier for people to adapt to a remote culture and to encourage them to be more productive when they are working remotely as well. So we're here to talk a bit about that. Um, so the real question is like, how can remote teams use collaboration platforms to adapt a company culture to, so that you can continue to create your best work and just feel that you're not constrained by when you're not in the office that you can't do your best work. So we're gonna just quickly show you today, we're gonna to talk about some of the approaches that we have at Mattermost that we use internally. Um, we're gonna talk about some of the tools that we use as well to help support those um, processes. And we'll also just talk about our personal experiences a bit um, and how we kind of keep everybody in sync and, and uh, on the same page. So we're gonna start with sharing some remote working experiences that both me and Paul have had um, and that the Mattermost organization as a collective, we've kind of brought some, we find that when we're onboarding and deploying new customers, um, there's some approaches and best practices that help make collaborating remotely easier. And then we'll get just, we'll talk a little bit about developing products and services remotely. Um, we'll talk about managing some incidents and in code through GitLab uh, and Mattermost. Um, and then we'll just finish up with the dev release, DevOps release process. So, uh, with that, let's just chat about you know, some remote working experiences. And before we start that, I think an important part here is that Mattermost is a remote first organization. And I often get asked, what does that mean? And the most important part of being uh, a remote first organization is really about courtesy and just being able to think about other people and having some empathy. Um, you know, making sure that you're following etiquette for discussions, calls, video calls, um, giving and receiving feedback openly and appropriately, and figuring out how to work better together, really. Um, and courtesy really means that we accommodate others who prefer to work in an office or remotely. So we're a remote first organization, not a remote only organization. We do actually have offices for some of our employees as well. Um, for myself, um, what I found my favorite experience when I first came to, to Mattermost, because I'd previously been in an organization where I was the remote guy, but lots of people were in a, in a head office. And for me, the biggest change was actually how fast meetings started because there was no fighting over meeting rooms. And there was no like, oh, we're just waiting for people to get out. There's no like, oh, we need the phones broken in this meeting room or anything like that. Um, I'm curious, Paul, what was your kind of different experience or favorite experience at Mattermost? Um, I think yeah, I worked at a, uh, prior to working at Mattermost, I was 80% remote at a company. And I think, you know, it's, it's really similar to yours in that we just sort of jump into meetings and get started. There's not that sort of buffer at the beginning where, you know, oh, you know, let us get the mic working or the Mac mini screen share is not working. Like none of that happens here. Everybody's already got a good 
mic, everybody's got a good webcam, everybody's got a good background. So it's, uh, it's, been, it's been really great moving to a fully remote company as someone who's wanted to be remote since we started working. For myself as a, as a product manager, which is unusual, frankly, in the past, I guess, um, typically a product manager is someone who's seen as being on site, um, kind of like in the, at the company because they're very cross-functional. Um, but with Mattermost being remote first, it kind of flips, flips that around. And for myself, I'm in the same place as my customers. I'm not in our office. I and mean, really my job is to empathize with customers, understand what they need, understand what's important to them. Um, and to me, the product, product management is actually a really key part of the DevOps process and getting customer feedback and input and making sure that we're bringing that into the product and solving those problems um, is really part of the DevOps cycle that we, you know, I think we're all familiar with. One other thing I think about, um, you know, at Mattermost is like, what does DevOps mean to us? And what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes we just think about, oh, it's a process, we need to get to release, and then it's all done. But um, when you look at it holistically, uh, we really feel like the entire organization is part of a DevOps process. Um, we have marketing that's involved, we have QA, finance is even often uh, involved in our various different product launches. Um, so to us, it's really all encompassing. And a, and a tool like Mattermost, which basically is a collaboration platform the less people chat, um, it, it, it enables everyone to, to get on the same page and really have a similar cadence in the DevOps process as, as things march towards release, right? Um, what we're gonna switch to next is basically Paul's gonna cover some different approaches as to how we can help to communicate smoothly at Mattermost and how we help uh, just get people's mental model of of socializing and where to go for certain information. Paul. Yeah, so one challenge in not having an office is that you know there's not a place where, okay, all the mobile developers sit here, or all the product managers sit here. So one thing we've done to work around that is to have very clear um, channel names and also channel naming conventions. So we have a couple channels on our community server called Ask R&D or Ask Anything and they are very clearly labeled where you can go in and ask questions. Um, and so we can, you know, the whole company can then keep an eye on those channels because we get uh, questions from customers, from community members, from our own support team. Uh, and it's a great way to make sure those, those questions get answered. Uh, the other thing uh, we do is naming conventions. So if we have a channel that's where the developers talk about X, we, prefix it with developers colon. So we have developers mobile, developers uh, enterprise, developers desktop. And so this helps to give people an easy way to figure out, okay, I have a question about the mobile app. Who can I go or where can I go to learn more about what the current status is of these things? Uh, and so having those naming conventions, you know, helps to create you know, sort of categories inside of Matterverse where we know, you know, this is where you know, we're allowed to post this here because there's always that trepidation when you go into a community, like, is this the right place to ask? And that helps to reduce that. Um, another thing we do is we celebrate our successes remotely. And, you know, in, a, in an office, that's pretty easy. You know, you go, you, you have it all hands and everybody says, yay, and they applaud. And, um, you know, that's, that's how you can do it when you're in person. But when you're remote, um, it, you, know, you have to change your strategy. So we have an announcements channel that's read only. Uh, and it uses an automation that comes directly from Salesforce through Zapier to show um, closed deals. So it shows the dollar size, the customer name, the background. Uh, and this gets us excited about our interesting co uh, customers. We've got customers in the space industry, in the video game industry. Um, and it's really great to see you know, everybody excited about these, you know, these names that we're, we're, we're getting in as customers. Um, it also is a way, so we had an incident where someone was phishing for our CEO's password and would send uh, emails to everybody pretending to be the CEO. And we were able to, in another channel, you know, notify people that this was happening, notify them, you know, tell them what to do when they saw it. Um, and, you know, that gave us a way to you know, be more secure and get this information out without having to rely on email. And even though it's read-only, we also allow emoji reactions. And that's a great way, you know, it sort of, you simulates that round of applause. 
in a, in a permanent way. So you can see who, you know, who reacted, what the reactions were. And sometimes we, you know, if it's a space customer, we'll get a rocket ship reaction, or if it's a video game customer, we'll get a, a, a game controller. Uh, and that's a great way to, you know, sort of celebrate successes and spread it around the company. Um, and then another way that we use um, this is customer service. So we want to prevent siloing inf of information. We want to make sure it's, you know, it's the, it's sort of the, uh, the concept of an open office. We don't want to, you know, have a lot of closed doors. So we take our support emails, which are coming in through Zendesk, um, and we CC them to a Mattermost channel. And what this means is that anybody in the company can search on a ticket number and find not just the discussion around it, but the actual original ticket. Uh, and so people in roles outside of support can see the tickets, get the progress of the tickets. And not only does this increase visibility, it saves us on Zendesk seats because we don't have to provide a, an account for every uh, Mattermost employee. So, and I'll hand it off to Aaron. He's going to talk about, uh, you know, collecting and distilling customer information to make better software. Into that, one of the things I think I'm just going to be talking a little bit about and touching on are process rituals. And it's really, you know, and, and I think of it as being mindful of how other people um, are part of your process and, you know, how that affects them. Um, you know, in, in Agile, it's people over process. Um, and to me with uh, process rituals, it really is about the people themselves. So some examples of that, you know, are just being conscious that when you tag other people's names, that they get mentioned about it so that it doesn't fall through the cracks. So when you want something done or looked at by someone, make sure you mention their name in a message. Don't just assume that they'll see it um, as part of the thread. I'm um, using established hashtags, so common hashtags. So I'll show you some in a minute here, um, just as examples. But that makes it much easier to find information across all the different channels. Um, and also doing things like this is a really great example where celebrating after a launch or a release um, so that we're associating good feelings with releases rather than, you know, sometimes people, I've been in organizations where it's like, and release is coming up and it's really nervous bad because there's often something going wrong. Um, so by making a process ritual that associates good feelings with a release process, you know, change, it, can, it can change how the team perceives things. And I think that's something that's important. It's a really good example of when you're working remote that sometimes it's the little things that can make a big difference. What I want to start off with is just as the example, um, so we often use, um, we have a channel similar to this within Mattermost, uh, you know, our customer success folks, support people, um, really anybody can provide different feedback here. Um, what's nice, what I was just mentioning before, is like when you have customer feedback, when you use hashtags, for example, um, I can find all the ones that have a customer reporting to it. For example, like a Zoom link is often what we associate with it. So when I do that, um, what ends up happening now is I've got the three um, messages that actually have that common hashtag to it. So it makes it easy for me to find information and contextualize it as well. So that's why it's important from the process ritual really to hashtag things appropriately. Um, but what I wanted to show off here is like, you know, a key part of any DevOps operation is really triggering off of messages, right? So just to start off here, um, I've, as a product person, we actually, um, it's always a challenge ingesting lots of customer feedback from various different sources. Um, so what I've done is basically we've made a quick way to capture info into our product board. And product board is basically a platform um, which keeps track of all, this, uh, all of our raw notes and then lets us attribute certain customers to certain different features that they want. And so what that's done here is now anybody in this, in this message channel basically can see that there's been a message submitted um, and that they can see the product board, for example. So if I click on that, I'll get easy access to that um, if I logged in. Um, so that's one way that's just from distilling customer information, um, having a, a tool like Mattermost that basically lets you quickly tap into a message that's triggered something uh, really lets DevOps teams often turn things around quickly. Another part of process rituals as a PM um, is something I'm often thinking about. And for example here, let's hop into one of my projects that I'm managing um, right now. And 
basically what I can do is I can be like, oh, you know what? There's lots of things going on. I just had a call with the customer and I want to queue up the fact that um, we need to think about you know, scalability. And what that means is basically now the agenda plugin that I just used there puts up an item using a hashtag for that's for our next um, weekly meeting. And basically now people can comment on this beforehand um, but when we get to our weekly meeting, all I do is I click on this, and then if other people have submitted agenda items, those come up. It's easy for us to collaborate and talk about meeting agenda items really quickly and concisely, and have a record of them in here as well. Um, we also have other tools so like Stand Up Raven that helps teams that are distributed so that you can have a, you know, an agile stand-up type of thing where everybody um, puts in their stand-up updates, and then when everybody's contributed them, in the channel, it actually posts like a, a summary across everybody's um, uh, stand-up updates for the day. So we, there's also things like to-do plugins that let you have some light project management. Um, but in that regard, process can really be helped by having these tools that are built into your collaboration tool and platform. With that, Let's, I want to switch over a bit because another key piece I think is, you know, collaborating with other folks and um, let me just switch back to my slide here. So our next slide is actually about productive recognition of people. So this is another process ritual that I think is really important for remote organizations, right? Um, and a really good example I think that we've got here is our monthly MVP for open source community members. So we as an organization, all of our developers will vote and find a, the, you know, the best contributions from the month and vote up one of those contributors. Um, we also have actually here, uh, I got some pictures, but from different folks, these are tweets. Um, every person who submits to the Mattermost project, uh, the open source project, basically, you will get a mug and it has your name on it. Um, so it's just a way of encouraging people and thanking them for contributing to our open source project. Um, we also have a recognition channel for awesome staff and people just go above and beyond where they probably should be going. Uh, it, it gives a central way for people to see like who's really you know, sticking their heads above and beyond everybody else. Um, and finally, like Paul, I was surprised when me and Paul were collaborating about this presentation, he had this really cool uh, thing that he does. So maybe you could tell us a bit about that one. Yeah, so like I said, we use Zendesk for our uh, support ticketing system and that includes something like, uh, includes customer feedback. So the customer will get an email once the ticket's resolved, you know, how was your help and how would you rate it? And so what I did is I wrote a webhook integration from Zendesk that will post a, an animated GIF in a specific channel that includes not only the ticket number, but also an at reply to the person who got the recognition and the text of what the customer feedback was. So it's really great seeing, you know, really like a celebratory GIF and then seeing a customer say, you know, you guys were really fast, you're really great, you're knowledgeable. Um, and then it also gives recognition to that specific agent who, you know, went above and beyond. We're gonna get back to work for a bit here. And we're gonna talk a bit for a second, just run through a quick scenario here where we're gonna see how a distributed DevOps organization um, with different channels can kind of coordinate across teams. Um, and the scenario we've got here is basically a customer is reporting an issue. Um, what we often do at Mattermost is we actually have uh, specific channels that are built up for our customers. So what I'm gonna do right now is actually switch into Acme Corp here. So with Acme Corp, they're one of our customers. Um, you know, the customer has their own specific name um, and they log into Mattermost and they can message us and our support team is basically notified when something comes in. Um, but our support team has the capability within Mattermost of directly creating a JIRA ticket, for example. Um, this is, this lets, a, lets them take the context of this conversation, which may continue and go back and forth and have a lot of uh, detail about it within it, but it lets you create a, a JIRA issue out of it as an example. So. We use Service Desk, for example, within Jira to keep track of different issues, um, which is very common across the industry. And so, like, if there's a P1 issue, you know, complete slowdown, and we can set the priority. 
Now you'll notice that I haven't left Mattermost at all. This is all happening directly within Mattermost. So when click create, um, this is all dynamic based on what I have access to within Jira. So um, from the security perspective, um, we can see here as well that it's created an issue in Jira. Um, there we go, we got our P1 issue, there's a config slowdown. Um, so we can see that, but most importantly, I think what, what ends up happening as well is that A, the other support folks are notified about it. Um, and then within what, what's now possible um, is that, you know, we can, we can get a developer on project A to basically start thinking about this, this problem, this bug, it's a P1 issue. Um, and I'm just gonna walk through real quick in the sense of, as an example here, um, so I investigate this as, let's pretend I'm a developer here. Um, I can basically go in and I've kind of already created this just for demo purposes here. You can see I'm going to assign it to myself. Um, and I'm going to look into this. But basically what I'm going to need to do is probably, so as a result of this, I'm probably going to need to actually do like a merge across and change something um, from the code in here. And so now, what we can do is really quickly just, let's make a quick update here. And just do a quick edit. Let's do something innocuous like change from chain, new channel, notify. That was the configuration error. It was mission, missing a dash in the plugin name. So now that we've got that, so I committed it so right, right there. Um, didn't even need to change the branch. Look at that. So we'll just treat that as now it's actually merged basically because we've committed it to master. Now what we do is we haven't switched over to the GitLab pipeline yet. Um, and so what we can do is we've still got some artifacts that are happening in Jenkins. And for project A, um, it's really easy for me basically to trigger off um, a new build. So after I've committed to master, um, it's pulling from, from that particular repo that's happening right now. And then what happens is we can see that it's being started and um, it's probably gonna finish off in just a second here. But what I'm gonna go next is to our release channel. And within our release channel, we can see here um, that project A was just completed. I think this is actually from before, so we'll probably get another notification. But what I wanted to point out is that in our channel right here, we have these checklists that if I go back a bit, um, this is the central place where our entire team keeps track of like, what do I need to keep, what do I need to check off the list before, you know, eight days before our release candidate testing is due. So this really keeps all of us on the same page. Um, you can see which items are completed already. And the reason that we release these binaries into this release room is so that the QA team becomes aware of it. We can actually pick this up and then do some QA testing before we pass it off back to the customer, for example. So I really just wanted to point out that, you know, we did a lot of stuff directly from here in Mattermost without necessarily leaving my control pane and switching context all the time. Just really goes to show the power of that. And using some of those process rituals makes this sort of workflow really easy and make sure that everyone's involved at the right times as part of that process. Um, so I'm going to stop there, actually. That is um, the end of that demo. Um, we're going to switch back here and just really close it all back up, I think. Um, I think that one of the things that's, you know, I've been speaking about process rituals, but uh, at the end here, you know, Paul, uh, as part of that release room, you know, I think that one of the ways we can make that fun is by, you know, having release parties is something that some companies have, I've seen do before. Paul, what's something you've seen seen done before as well? I'm curious. Um, yeah, release parties. The ones, the best one that I've I've seen is just a land party, and the best part about that is you can you can have that with remote uh, people. So I was working uh, a previous position that they had a they had a land party in the office, and I was able to log in and actually participate. So that's that's a good idea for a release party, I think, in a remote team. Awesome. And I think, you know, remote, being remote and being part of a DevOps team today is a real opportunity. It's an opportunity to make processes way more efficient. It's an opportunity to get people out of the way and working on things that are better use of their time. Um, mm -hmm. 
and I just want to leave it off here on the DevOps release process that, you know, Mattermost is basically a control plane control plane that fits on top of this that really gives you visibility all the different members of our organization as we go through this DevOps release process on an ongoing basis um, all of our organization is touched by that process and Mattermost really helps bring us all together and work at a similar cadence and make sure that we're hitting the dates and the things that we need to do to ship things on time um, and that's something that's been really impressive to me um, after joining Mattermost and just understanding how much of company culture as part of a remote organization and how important that really is of driving um, the effectiveness of the team. Paul, do you have any final thoughts on your end? Yeah, I think, you know, as a remote first company, it really helps to put everybody sort of on the same page. We're all working from home. We all have, you know, kids screaming in the background and we all have, you know, internet issues sometimes. So I think, you know, it being remote first is a great um, fit for fit for me. Um, and I think it's it helps to keep everybody on the same page. And like Aaron said, we use Mattermost as sort of the single control plane. Um, we, you know, it, you, it helps us to know exactly who to go for with a question. It helps us to, to let everyone know with a minimum amount of friction about everything that's going on. And so getting context around issues that are reported by customers can be very hard if you're you know, relying on getting in a room with people to talk about it. But if you're you know, just constantly communicating and it's all written down, uh, not only are you being courteous to everyone else, you're being courteous to your future self because tomorrow there will be another problem and you won't remember what, what the context was around that. So having everything written down, I think is one of the best things about working remotely is you, I have a record you know, I know exactly what I said, when I said it, and what I committed to, instead of it being, you know, on the phone or in a meeting room, and it just is as ephemeral as, you know, all speeches. So that's that's definitely one advantage to being, you know, remote person using Mattermost as our main communication platform. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone for your time today, and we look forward to hearing from you. Um, both me and Paula are accessible through Mattermost on our community site or through Twitter. Um, however is appropriate and shared any info there. But that's it, guys. Mm -hmm.